dodge this. You are now tuned into the truth frequency. Your protection from deception. T.L.R. Truth Frequency Radio. Government is not the solution to our problem. Oh my God, the government is here. Government is the problem. You're right. So what do we do? We stick it to the man. Stick it to the man? Say it like you mean it. We're going to stick it to the man. Louder. We're going to stick it to the man. What are we going to do? We're going to stick it to the man. If he gets up, we'll all get up. It'll be anarchy. Anarchy! You're listening to Live Free FM. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Free Market Squad in the place to be. How are you guys doing tonight? This is Live Free FM. I am your host with a giant hero complex, Nathan Frazier. You, more importantly, are the Free Market Squad, and you are tuned in to Live Free FM. I want to say a huge thank you to Chris Gio for putting this show on Truth Frequency radio network for Jules over at ucy.tv for simulcasting to lrn.fm for playing me over there as well and digital outlaws media for picking up the show and mostly to you guys listening you guys and girls i don't want to be accused of using trigger words there you guys and girls and people that aren't exactly sure which which category you fall into all of you that listen to the show Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Today, today is going to be awesome. I've got a, a, a long awaited return of one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite guys over on Truth Frequency Radio who I probably I've been on his show and he's been on my show more frequently than any other radio personality that I like to do swapping shows with. I've got Popeye from down the rabbit hole. Popeye, how you doing, man? What's up, Nathan? Thanks for having me back again, dude. Thank you for coming back. I love having you on the show. I love going over on your show. We always have just awesome conversations, and I've got some of the old shows that we did together. I've gotten some of the best feedback about any of the interviews I've ever been on or the any of the interviews that I've ever had. So uh, always great for my listeners when you come on the show. Always great for me because uh, I just love having conversations with you. Agreed. We have uh, some very epic conversations, and the things that we discuss actually resonate with the listeners. And I mean, for years, like even the older shows we've done, I still get comments or emails about. So that's awesome. So today, we're I was I had a whole thing planned for today's first hour of the show, and uh, then I was like, this morning, actually, I hit you up last minute, and thank you so much for accepting my invitation. I was like, you know. I don't usually talk about this type of stuff anymore, but I want to have Popeye on and I want to discuss this. And uh, of course, today being, what is it, the 15th of November 2015, we just recently had this uh, this uh, terrorist attack, allegedly, in, in, um, in Paris. And uh, I wanted to have you on the show because you're one of the most especially in the alternative media, some of the alternative media can go a little bit further out there than I'm willing to go. And uh, you're one of the guys that I really look up to and you don't seem to get as caught up in some of the craziness that goes out there. You're one of those guys that is always willing to look at things, but you also have a very strict filter that you run it through. So I wanted to have you on to talk about this latest event. And I want to preface this by saying, first of all, I have not made a personal um, judgment about whether or not the the events that were being fed through mainstream media are legitimate or not. I kind of default to the position that most of what we see on the mainstream news is uh, at least agendized, but sometimes and, and actually probably more often than not just completely fabricated. And uh, I... I uh, I don't buy into a lot. Of, I will say the majority of the things that I see in the conspiracy theory movement or or realm, I I usually reject about eighty eh, percent of them. But 
at the same time, um, people do conspire and people in, in positions of power conspire with other people in positions of power to maintain and grow that power. And that's just, that's just historical fact. And uh, to completely write off any kind of suspicions around world events like this as saying, oh, that's just conspiracy theory, I think is intellectually lazy. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to preface it with that. I'm not sure what I think about this whole situation. I typically reject a lot of what I see in, in conspiracy theory realms, but I also am willing to accept the, the reality that people do conspire and, and sometimes there are nefarious uh, hidden moves behind major world events. And I wanted to have you on because you actually, you're usually more uh, to the grindstone, nose to the grindstone on these type of stories than I am. And you typically, you typically report on them with a much more logical point of view than most, I would say probably 90% of the main or the alternative media does. And uh, we have this thing where whenever an event happens, people like to polarize, people like to use it to push their own agenda, their own ideals. We see this when a mass shooting happens, half of the left or all the people on the left say, see, this is what guns do. And then all the people on the right say, see, this is what gun free zones do. And so everybody's quick to take these events and put their own narrative on it. And, uh, at, at the risk of being guilty of it myself, um, I, I try to wait until the dust settles, but you're always one of those guys that's in there right away and usually pulling out some good information. And, uh, so I wanted to have you on to talk about this and i guess let's start the show by if you don't mind me asking what's your opinion before everything before everything is is settled on this so far are you suspicious of it do you think that the the official story of what or the the official narrative is credible or do you think that there might be more to it well let me let me answer the question with this i'll i'll start off with this that's a it's a bit long-winded but You'll get my point in a second. Normally, I usually say it's important to investigate things like this. Pay attention to the local news media if you can, because the, you'll find out more from the local than you will from the national media because you know things get filtered by the time it gets further up the food chain to the cable news networks. So you, you do find out some real information when you pay close attention. But I always say the first 72 hours, after any event are the most critical when it comes to information gathering because that's when you're going to be able to see the story change. You're going to see the initial story come out, mass amounts of info. A lot of it will be disinfo, misinformation. Sometimes not put out there on purpose to distract people or to, to confuse people. It just happens because of the way we, we have social media and you know Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and everything is live now. It's not like, you know, it used to take hours to find things out or days. I mean, things happen and you know within five minutes it's on Twitter. So there's a lot of info that comes out in the first two, three days. And I always tell people not to jump to conclusions right away. And, you know, don't run out and go right on Facebook or your YouTube channel if you're in the alternative media or even if you're just trying to wake people up and start screaming, oh, my God, it's a false flag attack, blah. <laughs> They're trying to take our guns. Oh, false flag terror. And I constantly tell people not to do that. And I always say, give it 72 hours. There are rare occasions when I break my own rule. This is one of them. So was the Aurora shooting, the, you know, the Batman movie shooting. And so was the uh, Boston bombing. And there, there have been others as well, but those are three examples. This thing, as soon as I heard it happen, I started paying attention to the, the news media coverage of it and watching it and listening to what was going on. And it was still, you know, ongoing. And my red flags went up. It just, Nathan, normally things don't make me, you know, don't, don't make me go through the roof like that. Normally, like I said, I usually tell people, wait 72 hours. And I, and I didn't go running around, oh my God. I just, we went on air that night and we covered it. And I said, I think and I still think this to this day, I think that it was, let's say, a contrived event. I don't like to say fake. 
let's say you can call it a false flag because this actually technically, although it, it wouldn't be a false flag by really false flag standards as in pretending to be, you know, one thing, somebody and doing and actually being somebody else. And, but it, it kind of is, and I'll, I'll break that down in a second. I'll get into that. But I, I don't want to put a label on it. I don't want to say it's a it's a fake event or a false flag. I don't want to use any of those terms. And the reason I don't is because they've become memes in the alternative media, unfortunately, because you have people over the years that have misused them. And to the general public, if you say this was a false flag event, they go, oh, you mean you think there's crisis actors and that nobody was killed and it's all fake and it's all movie? And no, 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 no. I don't, I'm not saying any of that. In fact, in a real staged Terra event, something that was contrived and controlled, you would actually want real death and destruction and mutilation and murder and mayhem and chaos because it feeds what you're trying to do, feeds your monster, feeds your end goal. You know, what, what are they? They believe the, the illuminated ones, as they call themselves, whatever you want to call them. I call them the powers that shouldn't be, right? Those people, they actually have that, that theory in their, ingrained into their skulls from the time they're children by their families. It's a, it's a generational thing that the ends justify the means. So it doesn't matter what they have to do to people. Remember that. I mean, well, they, look I'm, at 9-11. I'm going to jump in real quick because I think that I, to just say, well, they are guilty of this. I, I know a lot of people that do some things that are questionably... Uh, questionable when it comes to morality. And I could probably even look back at a lot of actions that I've even taken in the past where at the time I said, well, the ends justify the means. So saying, uh, you know, they're raised to believe this. I think that it's, I mean, and, and this is why I say I'm willing to accept some of these ideas of conspiracy uh, theories and stuff is because it aligns with what I know of myself and I know of human beings is, Sometimes we do do some pretty horrible things because in the time and in the way that we're thinking, we say, well, it, you know, it's justified because of this, this, and this. And if you don't, if you don't um, have that other point of view or if you're not able to empathize with the other people being affected by your actions, it's uh, – I know personally I've done some pretty horrible things in my life. And um, at the time, I didn't really have a problem doing them until I was able to – empathize with the people that were affected by my actions and and at, then i was like oh holy crap i am i you know i i am a pretty crappy person sometimes well you're human and humans make mistakes you know kennedy said an error becomes a mistake if you re refuse to correct it so only if you refuse to see what your mistake was and try to analyze it and you know correct it and not make the mistake again or actually make the error again then it doesn't become a mistake but you're human and and that happens and that's a perfect example by the way of yes that these people are human too just because they have access to occulted and occulted means hidden i know your audience is extremely intelligent but if, if you hear the word occult or occulted it just means hidden information doesn't mean dark, evil, scary information. It means they have access to information that you don't. Now, what they do with said information could be evil. You could do the same thing with a hammer. It's just a hammer. It's just a tool. Information is just information. It's what you do with it that makes it good or evil. You could take the hammer and build a house for a homeless person, or you could bash that homeless person's brains in and kill them. Which one is good? Which one's evil? Hammer is just a neutral object. It's what you do with it. Your intent intent ah that's where it lies anyway so yes these people they, to them look at 911 dude you know they don't they killed how many people over 3000 people how many people have died since because of all the dust and everything else they don't care how many people have died in all the wars that resulted from that how many people died in Iraq from our illegal and immoral invasion they don't care i mean they they really don't they don't care it's that simple. So do I think that they would pull something like this off? Yes. This thing just sets off my, my, all my alarm bells. And like I said, normally I'm like, wait 72 hours for you to say something like that. This case, it, it, I'm willing, I'd be willing to bet money that this was a, a controlled event. This it wasn't some actual, you know, oh my God, look, ISIS is coming to get us. 
they probably let them in and controlled them and handled them to a large degree. I'd be willing to bet money on it. There's just, how do they find passports? How is it that every time someone, a terrorist, gets blown up, they find a passport? And it's in good condition, almost untouched or unscathed in the, in the case of the 9-11 hijackers, unburnt. So, so uh, let's, let's, before we jump into, into any of that, because um, I definitely, there's a lot to get into, but before, just to kind of set uh, some tone or do a little bit of pre-framing, um, for the people that would be skeptical of this kind of idea that maybe, because I'm totally willing to accept there's people out there that are crazy. There's people that will, do, that will hurt other people, and they don't always have to be rich, elitist, bankster type people. There are just nutbags out there that will go on stabbing sprees or, or you know, bomb some places. It, it does happen. It, I don't think it happens nearly as often as the media tries to get us to think it does. But I, you know, there are people that are just, I've met people that have no problem hurting other people. I grew up around a lot of people that have no problem hurting other people. So for people that say, well, the, you know, Arkham's razor, the most likely explanation, it, it was just a nutbag that did this. Um, for people that immediately want to write off the possibility that maybe there might be something more going on than what the media is telling us about. Um, Let's kind of paint the picture. You mentioned this word earlier, false flag, and you and for people that don't know about what a false flag is and and what the war tactic is, because this isn't just like something that was made up by conspiracy theorists. This is an actual war tactic. What is the point of of what you what you referred to as a false flag? How does it work, and what is the psychological effect that it has on the audience? It, well, it, it comes the the whole term false flag comes from the actual use of false flags. Let's say, and this, this actually happens, let's say mm, the British wanted to attack the French, right? But you, you couldn't just sail up to a, a French merchant vessel uh, without getting fired upon or having them take off on you. In many cases, some of these merchant vessels uh, were smaller and faster than some of these bigger tall ships, depending on what these quote-unquote privateers, which were nothing more than paid pirates, uh, I actually had a family member uh, in my lineage that was a privateer, but I digress. Anyway, they what they would do is they would come up with their tall ships. And a perfect example is the French or this French merchant vessel would be, you know, going through whatever territorial waters that they're in. Say they're in international waters. They're, they're cruising along. And this British, English, whatever you want to call them, ship wants to come up and they want to raid them, but they know they're not going to be able to get close enough to them to get up to them and raid them. So what they would do is rather than fly the British flag, they would fly a French flag. And they would, uh, the lookout on the French ship would go, oh, they're, they're flying a French flag. Oh, come on. They, don't worry about them. They're cool. We don't have to run from them. We don't have to take off. And when they got within kill distance, they would drop their flag. They would drop the French flag and either run up like a pirate flag or run up if they were working for the English, the English flag or whoever. So it, it's, a, it's a naval term. It literally means to fly a false flag, to pretend to be somebody you're not. So the term is used in military terminology now, like we know it, going back to at least the Kennedy era, the 60s, and probably even before that, maybe even the Eisenhower era, but definitely at least the Kennedy era. And they used it. Uh, to do things, uh, the, the military. The, if you look through their minutes and their conversations, they, I mean, uh, Operation Northwoods. It was actually proposed to Kennedy that they they fake Cuban terror attacks in the United States in Florida and blow up a pretend to blow remotely control an airliner and blow it up and pretend that Cuba did it as a precursor to an invasion in Cuba. So these events. Things like this do actually occur, and the military does use it as a tactic. Now, Kennedy told um, L. L. Lemonser, the the, joint, the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff at the time, to kick rocks, and they weren't going to do it. But long story short, this this kind of thing 
is used, and it, it dates back to at least 50 years ago. So if it goes back 50 years, you can't say, well, they don't do that anymore. Yeah, they well, do. They, they would have perfected it. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying you're saying that. I'm saying no, no, no. any yeah. rational thinker, would, you, you don't want to think like that. You want to think logically and go, well, okay, obviously they're going to take that and expand on that program. I think also um, to kind of bring it to a, a more local level, um, a lot of times, I guess... <sighs> I'm trying to think of a good example, but in like a more personable level, if somebody wants to do something, you see these crime dramas where uh, somebody is, is, it's kind of like the, the, um, the twist at the end of the story sometimes where they leave a clue that points you in the wrong direction. So they can get away with the crime, but they deliberately leave misleading evidence so that you are look, you're barking up the wrong tree, and it gives them a more reasonable expectation of getting away scot free. So you pull a, a heist, and you find evidence that would lead the investigators to think that the heist was perpetrated by somebody else, and maybe that's a calling card of of what another heister might uh, might leave. And so you leave the calling card of somebody else so that when people do find out that they've been stolen from, they find that evidence and they start investigating somebody who had nothing to do with it. And it basically leads them down a, a, a <laughs> no pun intended, but down a rabbit hole. And, uh, and you get away, that gives you the extra time to get a running start. And um, so the idea of a false flag also, they don't have to pull down the false flag at the last minute and show their true colors they can hold it the entire time and attack you while flying the flag of somebody else. And to any onlookers or anybody who maybe survives the battle, they won't even know who the true attacker was. They'll have seen the flag of the, you know, like on a battlefield. If you, if you run a battle with a false flag at the end, anybody who's left over will make accusations that it was somebody who it wasn't because they saw the flag. They saw the, the misleading evidence and, um, you mentioned the the um, the Northwoods. I think that internationally, there's been the uh, the Gladio program, Operation Gladio. Are you familiar with that? And uh, and how this isn't just like a, a, a domestic or a homegrown um, or or uh, you know uh, how how they do terrorist attacks at home and and blame it on somebody else, but um, even internationally, there's programs for this. Yes, I'm very familiar with Gladio. In fact, um, when we covered it on Friday, I, uh, I brought up Gladio. I said, uh, I, I think that if, if anything, if there's any connection to any network at all, uh, it would be that. Like, and I, I say that not just very flippantly. I say that because you have to, you have, to have done the, the years of research that many researchers have done um, to understand what I'm talking about. So just before I get into it, I want to like throw this out there to people. Anything that I say tonight, it, it's not me just, you know, my, my flippant opinion. It's because I've spent years researching this stuff to understand the geopolitical games that are going on and everything that's going on behind the scenes. Uh, just take the time, take some notes, you know, go back and listen to Nathan's archives and just take a few notes and go do your research. And I swear the truth will absolutely make your mind go. It really will. It'll literally melt your brain out of your ears. But it is the truth. And all the facts of the stuff that we're talking about are there. But like Gladio, Gladio was this network that after the Cold War, it stayed behind in Europe because they could use it to do other things. And it's, it, there's all these different terror attacks that are connected to this, this network. Um, Sibel Edmonds has done... Uh, some shows on this. I know uh, other people have done shows because she was a whistleblower uh, when it came to 9-11, but side issue, she's, she, she does podcasts and stuff, and she's uh, I think she's even written articles about it, but she's done podcasts about it. Just look up, go on YouTube and just type in Operation Gladio or Gladio Stay Behind Network or Gladio Terror Network in Europe and research it. Because it'll blow your mind, ladies and gentlemen. It really, really will. So I'm actually glad you brought that up, Nathan. I would not be surprised if they used connections through the Gladio network to get these guys uh, weapons and stuff. And, and you know, they 
not it's not to say that they they couldn't use other networks too. I mean, they could have built. Uh, the the whole Gladio network itself, they could. It's not really like a a set, you know, group of roads or pathways or something that stuff gets transferred through. It's you know humans, so that stuff's very mobile and very flexible, and they can modify that to do things like this. And then, uh, like I said, there's there's a lot of little things here and there that stick out with this whole thing that just it reeks it it really reeks of total false flag and another example of a false flag really quick because i know we're going to break in a in a minute or two is the the event that led us into the vietnam war do you know what the gulf of tonkin incident is oh yeah for the audience though that doesn't i i almost want to be like alex jones and be like oh, i've seen the documents but yeah the, uh this is another example of when where it's been declassified of the, of them pulling this type of stuff. Yes, the the incident in the Tonkin Gulf actually never happened. Supposedly, one of our naval vessels was fired upon by a North Vietnamese naval vessel, and it never happened. Okay, it's that simple. And they, it, they weren't big; they were patrol boats. But they, they the the point is, it never happened. But it was a big giant story, and it was sold that we were attacked, and it was all over the mainstream media, and then. Years and years later, they quietly admitted that the whole thing was just made up. Yeah, McNamara admitted that the former Secretary of Defense at the time, when he was still alive, he admitted it. And I mean, it's it, you can look it up. It just it did not happen. It totally didn't happen. But at the time, all you needed was the politicians to come out all upset, and you just needed the press, Nathan. That's all you needed was the media and the politicians to be holding hands and spewing the same lies, and the people ate it right up. Because remember, reality is what they see on their TV. Oh, for some people. I think that that's having less and less of an effect every single day. The shows like mine and yours and the success of, of this network is testament to the fact that uh, it's having less of an effect. We'll be back. We're going to talk about um, a whole bunch of stuff related to this newest uh, craziness out there. This is Live Free FM. I'm Nathan Frazier. We got Popeye from Down the Rabbit Hole. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. All right. Welcome back to the show. Free Market Squad and the place to be. This is Live Free FM. I am your host, Nathan Frazier. We've got one of my favorite radio personalities out there on the air with us tonight. Popeye from Down the Rabbit Hole. Popeye, how you doing, man? What's up, Nathan? Thank you for joining us. I always love having you on the show. I don't have you on often enough. And uh, whenever we do, the conversation is is great. And um, I do appreciate having you on. So before we jump back into it, though, I want to give a shout out to everybody that joined us in the chat room. And actually, a, a small explanation. So I've been, uh, for the live listeners that heard that uh, little podcast blast off commercial in the break there, um, I just launched a, a totally new like online service and I've been very preoccupied trying to, uh, trying to get all this work done. Starting your own business is incredibly hard and building a successful business takes a lot of work. And I do apologize for the fact that it has taken a little bit of my time away from doing this show. Uh, but I'm, I'm, in a, and I haven't been consistently doing the show and, and I feel bad about that, but, for the listeners that still keep showing up and joining the chat room, even though they don't know whether or not it's going to be a live show, I do appreciate that. So I'm going to give all of them that are there today a shout out. It looks like Behind the Woodshed is there. Captain Gringo is there. Hopper HB is there. Joe Friday is there. Jules is there. Maddie Clues is there. Regular Girl is there. And Vincent Easley as well. Thank you, everybody, for showing up and joining the show, contributing to the chat room. And I hope you're enjoying this this uh, episode with Popeye. Like I said, I don't have you on enough, Popeye, but uh, but I you were gracious enough to accept my last minute invitation and come on tonight. So that was awesome and just uh, awesome, yeah. So we were talking about before we went into the break. We're talking about this whole incident in in uh, in Paris. This uh, this latest quote unquote terrorist attack. And I think we did a pretty good job of laying down a little bit of, of a, a pre-frame for people 
that maybe don't question these type of events. And I know that there are people in my audience that don't. And one of, we were talking about how people take these events and they automatically start putting their own agenda in them. The, the media does this, but I see people on Facebook doing the same thing. And so immediately I started seeing like, hate Muslims. We need to eradicate the, the, the Muslim population and, and all of this stuff. And, uh, and, from some of my more right wing friends. And, um, I, I don't know. I, I, whenever I see stuff like that, I have to, I have to step back and, 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 uh, it's hard for me to get into that group think where I, I, I hold everybody who happens to belong to one part of a group accountable for the actions of a small minority population inside of that group. If, if we're even being told the truth about the people that are accused of doing this thing, um, what, it, what's your take on people's reactions and, uh, and the almost like xenophobia or, or, you know, uh, it, it kind of seems like, um, it seems like the way a, a lot of Americans were about, uh, nine 11 and hating Muslims after nine 11, uh, and, and if people don't have like the average American's memory, um, or attention span. There was a lot of hoopla about freedom fries and how France didn't support our war on terror. And now it seems like France is re-energizing the war on terror. And uh, what are your thoughts about, uh, about, I, I saw a story about a, a, uh, a, a like a, a refugee camp that held a bunch of, of Muslim people being burnt to the ground and, and, backlash against a people as a whole and, and it seems like the group think mentality that france rejected after 9 11 it seems like uh it, it seems to be re-energized how, how do you feel about this what's your take on on this type of uh this type of meme that seems to be going around it's exactly what it is they're they're stoking everybody's emotions and right now it's anger and fear and they're getting everybody to, to live in the fear frequency. And, and uh, what I'm about to say to you is going to sound a little bit new agey, but I'm sure you understand this already, as do most of your listeners, if not all of them. The universe operates on two frequencies. It's very simple. AM and, and FM. Yes. AM and live free FM. <laughs> and uh, it, it, it really comes down to like quantum physics and an understanding of things. Everything has its own vibrational frequency. Everything, even you can go research this, spend 10 minutes researching this online and you'll find out that even mainstream science will, will agree to this. Everything has a vibrational frequency. There are two basic frequencies that the universe works on, fear and love. Very simple, okay? Our bodies, our physical bodies, we have DNA, right? Well, our DNA is actually a little antenna well two antennas ascending and receiving it's a straight up and down and it's also a circular antenna think about it go look at a dna strand it'll blow your mind it's an it's ascending and receiving antenna and that's what we're made of all these antennas so we give off energy we receive it we can feel vibes it's like when you walk into a room and someone's a real scumbag and you can just tell they're a real scumbag as you're talking to them or as you're looking at them that's why you always, you'll, you'll, the old school generations would say, you know, you got to get a feel for that person, mm. right? And it, being near that person is, it's much easier to sense someone, sense someone's vibe, right? Well, it's because you're, you're picking up the energy that they're giving off, even if they don't mean to, because they themselves are probably not aware that they're an antenna sending and receiving. So, understanding this very simple, basic truth about, the world and us and how we interact with it. Think about what happens when that antenna is tuned in constantly to a certain frequency and only that frequency. Now, if there's two frequencies, the universe works on love and fear, right? Love, if you're tuned into it, you're not afraid of things. You're not worried about the boogeyman under your, you know, your bed or in your closet. You're going to sit down and think things through some rational, logical thought. When you're afraid, 
that goes out the window. When you tune into that fear frequency, you're not thinking rationally at all. You're thinking, I want to be safe. I want to be protected. And our culture, our society nowadays is not brought up to be self-sustaining. We think we are, but we're really not. We're, there's not really personal responsibility being taught. There, there is on a you know, family level where parents are teaching their kids, but as a whole, society is not taught personal responsibility. They're taught run to the cops, run to the government, run to quote-unquote authority figures to solve your problems for you. Don't try to solve your problems yourselves. So everybody is going to go, oh my God, I'm scared, Nathan. Oh my God, make the government protect me. Like what you said, after 9-11. Well, it's the same thing with that fear also breeds hatred and anger, which that after 9-11, you saw Sikh Indians getting pulled out of taxi cabs in New York and getting the crap beat out of them. Uh, so there was a, a it, one of them, there was a Sikh Indian store owner. I think he was, I think it was in Pennsylvania or Ohio or Connecticut, somewhere around there. He got shot. He was out in Arizona. He got shot because they were like, oh, you stupid Muslim. He's not even Muslim. He's a Sikh Indian. I mean, not even the same religion. Well, and I, I just have to interject. I have a really good friend who is like a devout Muslim and, and even moved back to Lebanon when they had the, or Libya when they had the whole uprising there. And um, I have, uh, through him and, and through other people that I know, I probably have like four or five Muslim friends and most of them are very liberty minded, very freedom minded, don't want to hurt other people. Just like you have uh, inside of any religion, you might have some people that use their religion as a way to, uh, you know, hate and, and make themselves feel better than everybody else. But a lot of people, uh, you know, I, I can't say every single Muslim, but all the Muslims that I've ever met would, would not kill other people over some of the stuff. And, and when it comes to like uh, these attacks, um, I, when we had 9-11, they said that the, the, the devout, crazy religious Muslims the night before were at strip clubs and had left their IDs. One of them had left his ID at a strip club. And uh, we, I, I just saw something recently. Somebody was talking about how the whole time that they had spent with ISIS, they didn't even see a single Quran the whole time. What, what are your thoughts about just the group think of, of not even lumping like, uh, people who look the same, but people who who are part of the religion. Um, do you think that uh, it's healthy to to condemn an entire group of people based off of the accused actions of of a small amount of the people inside of that organization? Are all Catholics pedophiles? Exactly. No. Okay. Well, then. You know, when, and I know I, I, that's not directed at you. That's directed at the people that would say, well, you know, all Muslims, they all need to die. You know, they're bad. I, I've, I know people like this and I've had conversations with them. And I'm like, okay, look, that's just as ignorant as saying all Jews need to die, all Christians need to die, all Buddhists need to die, all atheists need to die. It, it, that's like, that's stupid. That's asinine, low level. Low, and when I, when I say low level, I mean like the low level of your soul, of humanity, which is, if you understand the esoteric things, that's what base level thinking is. Uh, uh, you, you might know Mark Passio, he's a good friend of mine. We've, I've had him on my show a couple bazillion times, and we've had conversations about that. That's the, the like base level thinking. That's where they keep it. It's like an animalistic state. That's, that's that level of thinking. Well, we, screw them. They're just bad. They're human. So they believe in a different story than you. Let, let's look at it from an outsider's perspective. If we were aliens, right? If, if an alien came down from outside of Earth, not a human, an alien, sees this, and they say they're, they're going to look at us and go, wow, you people all believe that there's some outer creative energy, you know, filled with, you know, love and whatever. And some versions like, you know, the Catholics, it's not so loving, but <laughs> you, you know what I mean. And it's a joke, ladies and gentlemen, but you know what I mean, Nathan. Anyway, the, the alien would look and go, wow, you guys all believe in this outward energy where you all come from, right? You know, some other source that, you know, all life and 
it's love and peace and understanding and total acceptance, but yet you kill each other over whose version of the same thing is better because that's what we do. That's what we would look like to an, we would look like a bunch of primitive apes. And honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if aliens did exist and they kept away from us because we're too dangerous. We're like the monkeys at the zoo. You only get so close. And I'm being serious when I say that because we, if you looked at us from an outsider's perspective, okay, you would see just that. We argue and kill each other over whose version of the same thing is better. That's what religious wars are. It's fighting over whose imaginary friend is better. You, it's, it's the same thing, but everybody's arguing over whose version of the same thing is cooler and accurate. And we kill each other and shed blood over it. And it's been going on for thousands of years. They, they access that. They turned 9-11 into a religious myth. Right, and they made it about almost. It was literally you remember. It was almost the Christians versus the Muslims. It was like the Crusades, you know, two point oh. Here we go again, and that mentality. It took a while for that to ebb off. It really did. I mean, look, we invaded Iraq over it blindly, you know, and it took how many thousands of people dying on our side, millions, over a million on in the Iraqi side, right, with the civilians and everything. How many? thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of injured and disabled permanently people coming back from these wars and everybody started to you know well you know i don't think we should be getting involved in any more wars maybe maybe we should end afghanistan maybe we should stop all this endless war and they weren't being people weren't afraid of al-qaeda they weren't and all of a sudden this this you know we should go into syria you know blah 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 no nobody wants to go into syria nothing blah 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 they they scare everybody every year around 9-11 they access that fear they, they remember they they love that vibe. They get you to tune into it by putting crap on the news. Oh my God, Al Qaeda's in your sock drawer. News at eleven, <laughs> you know. And then people believe that, and people again they, they oh my God, save me, you know, Nathan. I need the government to save me because my government government's not going to save you. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, they're never there. Are the cops there when the murderer breaks in your house at three o'clock in the morning? No, they're there to clean up the mess and investigate. You know what what the guy leaves. Okay, you're there. At 3 a.m. So you handle business. Now, that being said, when it comes to things like these terror attacks and any of these other events, the reason that they would do this, in a nutshell, because I know we don't have much time, but in the reason that they would pull something like this off is to access that fear, to amp it, to get you to look at them as their savior. Now they can do whatever they want. If, you know, they can clamp down and change the laws, add whatever they want, you know, shift things around, move things around in government if they want, make new things like, look what we did with DHS, right? They can do all this stuff, and they can also advance their own political goals outside. So foreign, foreign policy and domestic policy can be advanced however you want, just from one event. And when this happened two days ago, I said... I, I said, well, France now has their own 9-11. And I, I just, I, I, I said it just very matter of factly because that's what I saw. And within two days, their uh, ambassador to London called it on TV this morning, their 9-11. So there you have it. Now France has a 9-11. Didn't Spain, remember Spain got attacked? Oh, remember London got attacked, the 7-7 bombings? I mean, and, and there's a lot of, look, <clears throat> there's a lot of stuff that are when I say are red flags, there's red flags. And I, I don't want to get too sidetracked because I actually like where this conversation is going with us, Nathan, like the thought process of people and how they're led into believing this stuff. But I urge people to think for themselves and just go research this. And you'll, I know it's easy to buy into, oh, my God, those Muslims, we need to kill every single one of them. I, I trust me, I get it. OK, but we need to think that's the reaction that the powers that shouldn't be want. They want you to react like that. What if you're being set up? What if your reaction of, you know, because the American, typical American reaction is, what, you're going to F with me? I got yeah. my guns. I got my flag. I'm going to kick your ass. And, I'm, you know, that's America, right? That's how we are. We're 
you F with us, we'll put our boot in your face. We'll stomp your face and your throat. That's, that's this country's like reputation. Like we don't, we don't, we kick bullies asses. Well, what if you're known for that so well that people can play you and lead you into a situation without you even realizing that you're being led by the nose? What if? Yeah. And you, you mentioned this earlier and I wanted to kind of touch on this. Um, you mentioned how there's there's the two base emotions or frequencies of of love and 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 fear and uh, I know that when it comes to marketing those are also that's one of the first things that you're taught when you're when you're taught to market is you either market to their fears or you market to their passions and if you market to their passions you you market in you you find out what their passion is and you say this is how what I'm offering you will help fulfill those passions. Or if you market towards their fears, you say, this is what your fear is, and you amplify that fear. And you say, that, like if you're a doctor um, or a dentist, you, you see your, your patient has a cavity, and it's not bad enough to be causing any kind of tooth pain yet, but you tell them, look, if you don't get this cavity taken care of right now, it's going to get worse. You're going to start having tooth aches. You might have, your tooth might fall out. So, it's it's not a bad thing to market towards fear sometimes, but it's definitely one of the things that you learn when you're learning how to sell people on ideas. You're If you're a dentist, you're trying to sell them on the idea of fixing their teeth before it becomes a worse problem. If you're a politician, you're trying to sell people on the idea of giving you more power over their lives. And one of the ways is to, to hit them with the fear, amplify what the fear might lead to, and just... It's it's a matter of fact that some people who are unscrupulous, when they're trying to sell you on on an idea, they might plant some some things to make you uh, make you more susceptible to buying that idea. You you were talking about something earlier, and it made me think of magicians on a stage where you were saying something about the crisis actors. You don't have to have every single person involved be a crisis actor. But just like a magician, he doesn't have, not everybody in the audience is a plant, but he might have one or two plants in the audience that sell the show and make it more believable for the rest of the audience. If you have one or two people in the audience that you can call upon and get a a desired reaction um, that was pre-orchestrated, you can control the reaction of the rest of the people that are in the audience and, and that might be uh, for me if I was a politician um, and I was, you know, an unscrupulous person trying to sell the idea of giving me more power over my citizens' lives. Um, it, it's not unheard of to fake events and control at least a small percentage of the of the audience involved in order to persuade or manipulate the the overall opinion of everybody else watching. No, actually, it's it's much easier. And, and when people are afraid, it's very easy to sway their opinion. And right now, we live in a world where it's a constant drip of twenty four seven fear. That's all you. I mean, when you turn on the TV, that's all you see. And not even not the news. You turn on regular television, and you know, police and military and fears of terror or uh, and death of some sort, whether it's from being eaten by a shark in Sharknado or some <laughs> stupid way that they they put terror into the you know a tv show or they show people violent uber violent images that stuff affects your psyche you know there's a reason that they didn't show people getting their throats slit on television at nine o'clock at night when we were kids because they knew the effect that it would have okay and although there you know it doesn't mean that the plan wasn't going on back then it it just means that you can see things have ramped up or it's taken on a, a new level of things, whatever. Maybe the people behind the scenes have different morals. I mean, that, that you know, that than the people that were alive when we were kids, you know, and running. Or it's also but, possible that uh, that's what the audience responds to. And they're just, you know, they're, they're saying, hey, this works well and people are eating it up. So we're going to put more of it out there. So part of the blame comes back onto the people that, keep going back to their little glowing boxes and consuming the crap. Well, it's a cycle. They, they actually program you to... It, they're parasites that feed off of us, and they program us to literally 
we we don't even have to they don't have to police or control us we do it ourselves we go to that box and the the box tells us what our reality is now not your reality my reality not the reality of your listeners right and people tune in hanging out in the chat or whatnot no I'm, everybody that's tuned in right now is pretty awake i would assume what but the people that still live their lives why do you think there's been such a huge shift to reality television because people see that and they think that that's real. They think the fights and the drama are real. And then they actually emulate that. We, you know, if you believe what people like David Icke or other people say where we create our own reality, quantum physics says the same thing, where we create our own reality. So we create our own experience. And these people are being programmed because we're biological computers. They're being programmed by what they see in that idiot box, as my mother used to call it. <laughs> and it's it's putting false ideas and things into their head. And one of the things it does, no matter what, is it keeps everybody in fear and it keeps them afraid. And I know we only got like three minutes left, so I want to make this point. Ladies and gentlemen, you tune out. You have to tune out of that fear and tune into the love frequency. It's that simple. You have to, you have to physically do it. And it's not just, okay, I'm cool, Popeye. I heard what you say and I agree with you. Now I'm, I'm not going to be afraid. No, you have to live your life completely differently. It's like I have tattooed on the side of my neck. Be the change. You have to live your life to that mantra. You can't just say, well, I'm going to, yeah, I'll, I'll do it because you won't. And then you'll inadvertently, without even paying attention, fall back into the same habits. You have to reprogram yourself to not buy into the fear and not be afraid and to see through it. Even when, you're, when you really are afraid, you have to have the courage, which I know all of you do. I believe in all of you or I wouldn't do radio. I wouldn't sit and come and talk to you and tell you this stuff. I, I don't make any money doing this, so it's not like I'm selling you anything. You know, I'm, I'm trying to get you to believe in yourselves because you, at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, are the solution to the problems out there. I always sign off my broadcast. I say the solution to our problems are an inside job. All of you are the solutions out there. Every single one of you. There is no superhero that's going to come save you. You're your own superhero. It's that simple. And by doing that and by living like that, eventually we will make these people, the powers that shouldn't be, irrelevant. And their little false flag terror events and all that stuff and the, the ways that they manipulate us through fear and propaganda, none of it will work because they'll be completely irrelevant and they'll fade away. Well, they might not fade away, but I think that, uh, well, I think that we're... I mean. I think we're all well on the road to that. I think that, uh, that from what I've seen, it's becoming less and less effective every single day. And, um, there's more and more people that are, that are taking your advice and running with it. And I just want to say thank you for coming on. Where can people go? You've mentioned your show quite a few times. Where can people go to find out more about what you do, Popeye? If people want to tune into my radio show, I'm live Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard over on Truth Frequency. And, the archives of all of my shows I've ever done, special broadcasts, everything is over at PopeyeRadio.com, PopeyeRadio.com, and, of course, my website, FederalJack.com. So thanks, Nathan. I appreciate you having me on, and you need to come back on again, my show, again soon as well, brother. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, Popeye from Down the Rabbit Hole, FederalJack.com, is that, is that where to go? Yeah, federaljack.com and popeyeradio.com. All right, awesome. Thank you for coming on. Been an awesome show. Ladies and gentlemen, like I always say at the end of every episode of Live Free FM, faith in each other, not in authority. We'll catch you later. Peace. <laughs>